Turning to our top story now, whether Donald Trump will pull out of the Paris climate deal. And I'm joined by Paul Bodner, a former climate advisor to President Obama. So thank you for joining us. I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, a possible backlash. You wrote some time ago that you believed if the US was to pull out of the Paris Accords, there could be a huge backlash. What are you worried about? Yes, I think it would be a sad day for uh, U.S. standing in the world if President Trump announces, as he's expected to do in a few minutes, that we're withdrawing from the Paris Agreement. This is, this is a, a multilateral agreement that 195 countries painstakingly worked for many years to negotiate and was endorsed by more than 120 world leaders who showed up personally in Paris. So as you can imagine, uh, this is core to the interests of many countries, particularly the poorest and most vulnerable countries but also major economies. And for the United States to just turn its back and walk away will be taken as a huge slap in the face that will have serious implications for our ability to get business done in other areas, whether that's trade or security. How important are these agreements nowadays when you've got sort of technology really moving on such a pace and, and money to be made from the green sector? I mean, how much is it that that the, the sort of independent sector will just do its own thing anyway. And we're also hearing you know, various states, various mayors across the US saying we're going to stick to these, these agreements, the, the environmental protection. And also, uh, you know, there are many companies saying the same thing. That's right. And, and as you point out, um, for a president who professes to speak for business, he's ignoring the pretty much unanimous warning of major American companies not to do this. Uh, it is true that the business case for the green economy has never been better, and technologies like solar and wind are actually cheaper than fossil fuels in many applications already, with costs declining further. But having an international coordination system like the Paris Agreement is really important, so that as countries go through this big transition, they're confident that their peers and competitors are also going through it at the same time and have the same destination in mind. Is there a way that he could almost sort of fudge this decision, if you like, come to some sort of halfway house where he doesn't sign up to it completely? Because we don't know he's going to walk away from it. Well, I think you might find that he does walk away from it, but leaves open the possibility that they would rejoin. Uh, I don't think that's something the international community is going to be particularly enthusiastic about. They've seen this movie before. We withdrew from the Kyoto Protocol. And, uh, and I can tell you, as somebody who uh, was a climate negotiator for President Obama from the very beginning, it took years for us to rebuild that trust uh, that, had, uh, that had been eroded during the Bush administration. So even if President Trump leaves office and a more like-minded administration comes in after him, it's going to be very difficult to, uh, to bring the United States back to the table, I'm afraid. Um, on a personal level, I'm guessing this is almost breaking your heart, having gone so far with the previous president, to see it all go back in this way. You know, actually not. I'm very confident that the Paris Agreement will, will stand the force of this blow. Uh, you know, to take the, the nursery rhyme, Donald Trump can huff and puff, but he won't blow this house in. And I think that's a testament to the resilience of the agreement that we all crafted together in the world. And I think the biggest loser here, unfortunately, is going to be the United States, including our workers and exporters who are not being assisted to take advantage of this huge clean energy market that's, that's uh, exploding right now, but are being told to go back to focus on 19th century technologies like coal. We all have a lovely image of uh, the president huffing and puffing. Paul Bodner, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, sir.